When you need to get a message out to people in your family, well, it's nice to have a quick and easy solution. And Google has implemented this with their new feature that is available on the Google Nest smart displays, the Google speakers, and of course, the Google Assistant. All you will need to do today is to ask to broadcast to your family group. And yes, this will go out not just to those speakers and displays, but also to the phones for people you've invited to the Google Home app and have included in your family group. And then they'll be able to reply and you can have a back and forth with everyone from your family to tell them to actually come to dinner. The new broadcast feature joins the previous ones where you could broadcast to your whole home or to a specific room. This gives you a lot of options for communicating with your family through the Google Assistant. And speaking of that Google Assistant, you know what works really well with it is today's video sponsor, SwitchBot. If you have never tried SwitchBot, then you're missing out. And today you can try SwitchBot for just a dollar plus shipping. There's a link down below where you can go and get a SwitchBot bot, which is what I use on my coffee maker and on a couple of my light switches, as well as on my personal computer to turn those things on and off using my voice or through Google's routines. I also use their other products like their humidifier, temperature and humidity meters, automated curtains, and their hub as an IR controller. But still to this day, my favorite is the ability to press almost any button with their SwitchBot bot. The ability to try SwitchBot for so cheap isn't going to last forever and while I do recommend that you get a hub with it so you can use it with the Google Assistant, this is a great opportunity for you to head there, check the links down below and get something for really cheap that I really love. The big news last week was Google I.O. And while we didn't get any new device releases during that event, if you were paying attention to the entirety of this developers conference, there was a lot of little details that people missed and are big news for what you're going to be able to do. One of the big things that I think has never been addressed well by Google is within their Google Assistant actions. And on Amazon's devices, you call those skills. There are so many skills on Amazon side and they are quite useful in a lot of cases. And Google has just never been able to get there with their actions, but they made a number of announcements and gave developers a number of things that will entice them to create these actions and provide us a better experience. In the past, if you touched the screen while an action was running, it would stop any speech going on. And in a lot of cases for me, it would just stop the action from working correctly. Google has adjusted this by giving more interactivity within actions. So touching the screen will no longer stop the action from continuing to give you that experience. Couple that with the new full screen experience capability. You think about storybooks being interactive or comic books and other types of media. Plus developers can now use this new media control interface that we've all had access to for a while. They can now use that and skip around. So push you to different parts of long form content like today's video. Likely the most enticing feature for developers though is the ability to actually input and process credit card numbers on your smart display. So you're going to see that starting to get worked into these actions and therefore I think we could see some great shopping experiences and more. And there's a number of actions already available today. If you ask to talk to Quidditch through the ages, you're going to get a number of four to five minute stories and it's a bit of an interactive experience. Plus, if you ask the Google Assistant to sing a song about brushing your teeth or going to bed, you're going to see this full screen experience. We've seen things like this before in isolated cases, but this is the kind of experience you can expect going forward. Now we come to the end of the day. You've had fun and time to play. I've had wise cams in my home for a very long time and I know a lot of you have. This update doesn't relate just to wise, but if you've ever tried to bring up one of those wise cams on a smart display, 
it's a pretty bad experience. If it comes up at all, it'll probably be lagging behind reality and it'll skip in and out of streaming. And this should be fixed soon with Google adding a new video streaming format called WebRTC. Wise has added it as well and it's already available on V2 cameras and then we'll come to V3s, outdoors and doorbells. The best news though, it prioritizes local routing of streams on Google Nest displays. Sadly, this isn't working now for me, but you can tell that changes are going on behind the scenes already. One of the things we've been missing with video cameras and video doorbells and door locks and uh, laundry machines and really everything within the Google system has been the ability to hear when an event occurs. And this was something rolled out at the developers conference for developers to go and create so they can now create audible notifications out of some different events within your smart home. And that would work within the Google Home routines, or that was what we were led to believe. Google gave us a little more insight into their approach to routines and automation, which again was heavily focused on developers going and creating those routines and then giving them to you to just simply enable and then customize slightly. Google continued to push their Bluetooth seamless setup method, which I showed with the Yeelight M2 bulbs here, and is a great setup method that's very easy to control after the fact, but that confuses me a little bit when you think about all of the focus, and we saw a ton of focus from Google related to the upcoming Matter smart home standard. They showcased a number of companies that they were partnering with, and actually Nanoleaf came out separately and said that they were working to take some of their existing products and make sure they were going to work within the Google Home system for Matter. Of course, many of Nanoleaf's devices now are just thread capable and not necessarily Wi-Fi capable, which will work with some of the Nest products you have in your home. As Google laid out the devices that they have within the Matter standard that will be both thread and Wi-Fi capable, as well as their devices that will be Matter capable, but just with Wi-Fi. So there's kind of that differentiating factor that you have to understand going forward. Some of these devices are capable with thread and Wi-Fi and some are not. And if you're a little bit confused about what this whole Matter standard is, there's a link down below to a total explainer video here from us at Automate Your Life and we'll get you caught up on what's going on here. But Google also gave us some insight into how they would be bringing their end devices into that Matter standard. Now what happened at the conference was they said, we're starting with the new Nest thermostat, the one that came out last year, and they even talked about the ability to use that with something like Apple HomeKit. So we will see their devices as they alluded to some of the previous devices getting worked in, but we'll have to see as the only confirmation right now is that new Nest thermostat. And speaking of those Nest products, you might have noticed that the Nest Cam IQ has actually gone out of stock in the US and it doesn't seem to be coming back. So when you couple that with recent FCC filings that we've talked about previously, I think it's pretty clear that we're going to get new Nest cameras very soon here from Google and that they will be Matter certified. It's great to get all of these new features and new updates, but it's even better if you can actually get the product. And the Nest Hub second generation didn't have a lot of countries that it was available in initially on launch, but we have seen that expand to many more countries in the last month, especially in Europe. Now that Nest Hub second generation is of course the one with the sleep sensing capability, but we actually have some news on the older first generation Nest Hub because it's not every day that I get to tell you there's a whole new operating system sitting here. That new operating system is called Fuchsia and actually I've been waiting for this for a very long time. I think it has big implications for the smart home industry. Now, if you have Fuchsia on this device, then you're one of the lucky runs. It's kind of a slow rollout, but you shouldn't even know if you have the Fuchsia OS on here, if your device has been upgraded from that cast version, it should be seamless, you shouldn't be able to tell, there should be no performance changes. That's the goal of this rollout from Google. 
No matter what kind of smart display or smart speaker you have from Google, it's becoming pretty apparent to me that Google Duo is the way forward when we're talking about voice or video calls. This is pretty clear because not a lot of countries have the ability to do that more traditional phone over IP method. So not only does the Google Home app have an expanded menu and more options there for Google Duo or voice and video calls in general, it also has a new feature in there for Google Duo where the calls will only arrive if you're actually at home. And obviously this is something you can set per person that you've invited into your home to make sure that they're only getting phone calls on the displays and speakers when they're at home. I've woken up to some new notifications from my Nest Wi-Fi and for those of you with that device, you're actually going to be able to go into the more detailed settings today and when you get in there, you'll notice a whole new notification section. You can pick and choose what you'd like to get but it's been nice to know when one of my access points goes down. One of the big focuses at Google I.O. was obviously Android 12, but the Google Assistant has been interweaved into so many different aspects of what Google is doing. And even the Google Assistant app has had some pretty significant updates, including the new snapshots capability. I've shown this one a few times, but now you can customize your favorites and bring the favorite sections that you wanna see instantly when you go into that app, you can bring them all to the top. Shortcuts, which should not be confused with snapshots, are something fairly new to the Google Assistant, but Google significantly expanded this capability at Google I.O. and have already given a number of developers access to these new features. Now, they have kind of three levels of what you can do with the Google Assistant related to your apps. The ones we've mostly seen in the past are the basic ones. That's where you can open up an application. So you can ask the Google Assistant to open Twitter. But they have this second level that they called vertical intents and it works more within different segments of the types of apps you'll have. One of the types would be that social media application. So you can ask to tweet something something out and then give that text. But they have this third level which is called custom intents. And the example they gave and is already implemented in the US with the Walmart application is the ability to go straight to the booking screen for picking up your order that you put in at walmart.com. And they also showed the ability for you to reorder whatever you've had, your favorite sugary drink from Dunkin' Donuts, or go a little healthier and ask Strava how far your last run was. And you'll be able to see lots of those within the shortcuts menu in the Google Assistant. I really like seeing Google Assistant get more interactive with the different things on my smartphones and my tablets. We spend so much time with those devices, I like the voice control capability. Now, this goes further with the Google Assistant and actually Duplex, which has been worked into some other things that Google is doing, including if you're in the US, because that's where Duplex is available, you should see the ability for some of your search results when you're looking at restaurants and you're looking for takeout to actually order right there and have most of the information filled out by Google Duplex. Duplex is also powering part of the password manager. Now, what they're doing here is one of the features they rolled out at Google I.O., which would allow the password manager to take you right to the page where you change your password. Within Google I.O., Android 12 was obviously a huge focus for Google with the new Material U design. They also had a number of new animations and just ways to make that operating system look and feel a little more fluid, a little more natural for us. One of the things they brought into the Google Assistant that will have to wait for Android 12 are some widgets that will give us more interactivity and just more visual responses. What's interesting about those widgets as well though is that they will find their way over to Android Auto and Android Auto is also getting an upgrade in terms of the Android Auto wireless connectivity option. If you're like me and you use the Google Assistant to make phone calls or to ask questions about contacts, 
well then oftentimes you're probably getting back a mispronounced name and this can actually be corrected in English within the contacts application. I don't actually have this one. This is only based in the US right now, but I'd love to hear if you have it and you're outside of the US. When you go into that application, you'll actually be given the opportunity to record a new pronunciation and then the Google Assistant will actually repeat that back to you and it will be corrected from that point forward. Lots of these features come out on Android and then they may or may not ever come to iPhones, but it's nice to see the fact that iPhone users can now use the Google Assistant to find their iPhones, just like Siri. Android 12 will bring with it a number of new controls for us that are baked right into the operating system. And you know what, the Android TV app has been a great control method for my Google Chromecast, but it didn't look like we were going to get a replacement. Well, that's what Android 12 will be. And we're also going to get a ton of new control elements for our privacy, as well as our smart home quick controls getting moved to the front of the settings pull down. And speaking of those Chromecasts, there's a new HDR10 Plus certification for those devices. And if you're someone who has the Spanish language selected, well, now you have an entire interface that actually is properly translated. And the YouTube app is getting an interface that looks much more similar to the Google TV interface. So I think we're going to see that roll out through a number of Google services on that Google TV. With all of the focus being on Google TV upgrades, it almost feels like Android TV is starting to run out of steam, but that's not the case. Anchor is putting out a brand new dongle and actually Walmart is putting out a very inexpensive device. We'll have to see if that one can actually fit the bill. Now, those are the only new smart home devices that we talked about coming within this whole Google Home ecosystem today. And that was one of the big disappointments from Google I.O. We're just not getting new gear from Google. But I did a lot of research and I found the best new smart home devices for you. It's all packaged into the video you're seeing on screen right now. So go check that out and I promise you're going to find something. In fact, if you don't, you can leave me a nasty note on that video. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.